This meeting is being recorded by the Conservation Commission. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. I will call to order this meeting of the Greenfield Conservation Commission at 6.40 on October 8th, 2024. Um, members of the commission present include Kristen, Travis, Emily, Erica, and myself. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from last week. Would anybody like to? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from, uh, what was it? The 28th? Sorry. I lost it. All right. I have too many things open. Was it the 28th? 24th. 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 Yes. Yep. I'll second that. Great. Uh, let's put it to a vote. Now, Travis, remind me, um, as it relates to the minutes, since I was not here last week, do I abstain? I, um, I was told that you don't have to abstain but um i mean i usually abstain just because uh it only has to pass with a majority anyway okay uh ready then a uh, vote starting with erica um well i wasn't here either so i'll abstain <laughs> um kristen aye emily aye travis aye i will also abstain and the vote passes with the majority All right, next up on the agenda, public hearing continued from August 27th, notice of intent, bridge repairs near 43 Mill Street, department DEP number 168-0362. Um, and three, I believe that's... Yes. Yeah, wonderful. Hey, uh, so uh, my name is Bree Sullivan. I know that um, our uh, document says Bayside Engineering were required by Fuss and O'Neill um, back in August 1st. So I, I assure you it's still the same company, just a different name. Uh, so we're really happy about that, that acquisition. Uh, they're a great company. So, um, so uh, I was at the last meeting. Um, our project didn't make the agenda. This meeting was continued from actually, I think it was two or three meetings ago because we were still waiting on the um the the nh nhesp um review letter um that came in shortly after that meeting um did you get a did you get a copy of that you you've had a copy and you reviewed it um the the most critical uh comment on that was the first comment which is a turtle protection plan for construction period operations um, just to recap, I don't know if all the members of the commission were at the meeting when I talked about the project. Um, the only reason we're in the resource area is to put a shoring tower to hold the outside beam up while they fix the support underneath the beam. Um, it, it's a very small scope for a project. Um, we anticipate the maximum impact in the waterway will be uh, four to 500 square feet of area, um, and that includes uh, control of water structure. So sort of if you're familiar with the dam and you're, let's say you're standing in the river looking at the dam, um, this construction area is on the right side. So kind of where that little walkway walk goes around um, that's fastened to the, the bridge abutment. Um, if you go on that walkway and you look up, you can see that the corner of the the corner of the bridge abutment is deteriorating. Um, mm -hmm. That is the repair that that this the the bulk of this work um, will will be done for. Um, there are a couple of small railing repairs they'll be making as well. Um, there'll be no pavement removal. There'll be there'll be no ground disturbance. We're not going to access the river by the banks because they're too steep. You can't get any equipment down there, which is a good thing, right? We want to keep it vegetated. Um, and um, so uh, the shoring tower will rest solely on the, the existing concrete footing for that abutment. So that sticks out, I believe it's 12 feet off the top of my head. It, it's in the design plans that you have. Um, and uh, what I did is I actually took 
a um, uh, I took a, um, a survey rod and I was I, I was able to probe under the water and I could feel that that really there's no stream bed there. It's really just the footing for the bridge abutment. So we're not expecting that we're going to disturb any um, stream bed material either. Um, it's pretty it's pretty turbulent at the base of that waterfall. So um, in terms of stream bed material, it probably wouldn't stay there anyway if you put it there. Um, so that's the extent of this project. Um, uh, the the reviewer uh, and I believe who was the reviewer on this? I believe it was. Let me see. It was the well. The list was uh, signed by Jesse Ledick, assistant director. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I reached out to a uh, a local uh, biologist to work on this plan. Um, and I still need to um, follow back up with her. Um, I suspect she's pretty busy. Um, so, uh, but we are working on getting a plan um, for construction period turtle protection. So that that plan is anticipating to include um, a monitoring component as well as a uh, so a plan for what to do when they're doing the construction. And obviously um, this would be submitted to the commission prior to the, the start of construction, the reconstruction meeting, um, as, as I know is required by the, by the, low, by the commission um, typically. Um, so the plan would be to submit this document to the commission um, prior to that meeting, and then discuss the, the facets of the plan at that meeting. Um, so, uh, we obviously don't have the plan yet. Um, the construction is 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 not going to happen until the spring, or if it's a time of year restriction in the spring, then obviously we won't be doing it during the time of year restriction. So either early spring or whenever the the most advantageous time to do it is, so we don't we don't disturb any habitat. Um, so so we're not in a hurry to get this done before winter, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, what I'd like the commission to consider if 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 you could, is to um, approve um, or at least put forward an order of conditions with a condition that this plan needs to be submitted either by a certain date or prior to um, the uh, the pre-construction meeting so that the commission can have enough time to review it and ask questions. And I'll just point out that we have done that in the past. Um, I remember uh, the utility project, I think, where they had to submit a turtle protection plan and our, our um, condition was that they had to submit one and get approval prior to construction. I'll also just kind of snowball on that. I'm glad that you clarified, Bree, when the construction timing would be because wood turtles are kind of colloquially known as a river species. So they hibernate in the banks in right. these free flowing water. So if you did the work in winter, like how would you relocate a hibernating turtle? Exactly. It would maybe be in banks. That would be a really bad time mm -hmm. to do it. So it's good that you've already thought about doing it during the active season when they wouldn't be in the river. Um, which would make the protection plan much, much easier to craft. Certainly. Certainly. I, I did read about that. So I, I believe the species of concern is the wood turtle. Um, it was really interesting um, for those of you who don't know, don't know about the wood turtle. So I, I served on a commission for seven years, so I'm kind of familiar with a lot of this stuff. They actually pound the ground to make the worms come out of the ground so they can so they can eat. So the worms think it's raining out. The raindrops on the ground. So they use their 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 flippers and they pound the ground, and the worms think it's raining, so they come out and then they they have dinner, right? So it's it's kind of an interesting thing with the wood turtles. Very cool. Yeah, so I don't know. I didn't see any like timing restrictions in the heritage letter, but my preference would be after you know they're no longer on the banks. So maybe, absolutely. I mean, yeah, that maybe. makes sense. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, if, if that's heritage, whatever, whatever heritage wants. But thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, and Kristen, yeah, I mean, it does. I I discussed it with the with the with the city and uh, the DPW and uh, with Alan, and um, 
feasibly we can't get a contract in place and get people out there and it's not critical the the, the bridge is not in danger of, of falling into the river so it's not something that we need to do next week so um it can wait to the spring and Kristen, i was just going to say for the timing um you know that letter does say that they would need to submit a plan and receive written approval um so uh i think if if they didn't like the timing that was you know yeah. um in in the plan that they wouldn't get written approval so i guess i would defer to natural heritage on you know on the um, approval of the turtle protection plan because they're the ones that approve it exactly we're actively working on getting this in process. We don't, I mean, winter is a good time to work on a plan like this because they're, the wetland scientists or the wildlife bi biologists will be less busy, right? Presumably. So we're not going to wait until a month before we want to do construction to do this, obviously, because there's an approval time frame. The commission has to review it. So we're working on this now. Um, so if if I don't hear back from the biologist that we we contacted, we'll contact someone else. So um, simple as that. And we we have a little bit of time here to get this underway, and we'll get it to the commission um, as soon as we get it. Do we want to go through the rest of the DEP comments? Let's do that. Uh, my lamp went off. So, gosh, my lamp is going out. So, uh, Bree, just to address my screen? comment number one. Yes. There are five comments. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Um, so comment number one, I thought it, so when, when we received these came before the national heritage um, determination. So I guess depending on how you interpret that condition, is it a full approval or were they just waiting for this letter? I think it just means waiting for that letter. I agree. Yeah, it says in the letter that, um, I think it's, let me get it exactly correct. Um, it is within the actual habitat of wood turtles. However, based on their review, do, 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 the, it's their opinion the project meets that the state listed species performance standards is met for an issuance of an order of conditions. Sorry, did I freeze? Did you hear me? Yep. We okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, them. yep. Okay. So the FEMA mapping, um, did you include a ferment? I know we don't have digital data for our part of the state, but did you include a FEMA ferment in the application? Uh, so if you if you have uh, a if you're looking at a digital copy, it's page 17. Um, and uh, there, there's a format in there with the site called out. Save us the suspense. Is it in bordering land subject to flood? Um, the work area in bordering land subject to flood. So, so it is, it okay. is to the extent that the shoring tower will displace water. Uh, yeah. So, okay. I mean, yeah, it's in it's in the river. So in any under any definition, we are in bordering land subject to flooding. Actually, no, that's actually not correct. We are in the um, land underwater resource area. So 
I mean, tactically, according to this this format, we we are in the resource area. They they overlay each other. So, um, but we're really only talking about the shoring platform. And then when they're done, the shoring platform will be removed. So you're not doing any work above mean annual high. Um. Like we are, we're not doing any work in above mean annual high water and still within bordering land, correct? Okay. Yeah, we're way above it. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Well, that's a weird comment then. I don't know how to interpret that. I feel like that comment from DEP is one of those uh, standard comments that get tacked on anyway, oh. anytime it's near <laughs> the you know, land subject to flooding. Okay. I think it's one of those. Like okay. just double check, you know. That's gotcha. Like okay. <laughs> so do we have like a construction plan or a phasing plan or staging plan or I don't know. Any of that? Plans should show um, the work area. Um, one of the plans, or I have a copy of it here if you don't have it, um, but the plans that were submitted with the application include, so, so what we did is we took the existing bridge plan, which I believe was sometime in the 1980s, which is the bridge that you see there now. Um, and then we sort of we, we graded out a bit and then we we overlaid our our work on top of it. So you can kind of see here where we're showing um going to load. <laughs> so now if you go if you go to the next page, um, so you see here where it says um no live load. So that that area there is is where we're gonna actually place barriers on the roadway. So that while they're working on that beam, which is which is girder six, um, no cars will be allowed to travel in an area that will will directly impact that beam. So they're gonna put barriers on the roadway. If you if you actually if you scroll at the end of this, and we don't need to zoom to the end yet, um, yeah. is is the traffic control plan, and yeah. that shows where the barriers are. And so there's really no staging involved here. It's really just um, putting the barriers in, placing the shoring, jacking the beam, repairing the abutment, letting the beam back down, removing the barriers. So are you like doing a dewatering plan? Do you have a material storage area? Is that going to be in resource area, like bordering lands up to the flood or riverfront or any of that stuff? It shouldn't be. All of that area can be can be kept on the pavement. Um, because the materials that you're going to need for this project, they could either be kept behind the barriers, and that's probably where they'll keep it, or somewhere on the pavement. There's really no way to keep it um in a vegetated area because the, the slopes around the bridge are too steep. It it just doesn't make any sense to do that. So you can see there. See that the, the hatched area there on the bridge is the area where there'll be no live load. They can actually put supplies in there and it's behind a barrier or actually it's behind um, behind barrels as they're showing there for, for the uh, traffic plan. Um, and it'll be out of the out of the traveled way. I, I think we talked last time that all of the equipment is going to stay on the bridge during construction, correct? What? Well, um, so they'll be using a crane to place the shoring tower. Again, no no other way to do it. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, the, the difficult access actually makes it easy in terms of resource disruption because you just, there's no way to, to use that area for staging. Okay. And then if you look on the, that plan set, there's also a, a, a control of water area. Um, for the most part, what we do is we have the, and you can see it there with the shoring tower. Um, and then uh, do we have, there was a little, oh, there's, there's a sliver right there. Control of water as required for jacking and shoring operations. So um, that 
area right there is 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 kind of a, like a, a little dead zone in there because they're just to the looking at this plan just to the left of that is the spillway that's always flowing Mm -hmm. Well, this area is a little, it's a little area where the, where the water kind of circles back. It's not active, necessarily actively flowing current. Um, so placing the control of water, as you see it there, um, is the most convenient way to do it. Um, and the impact numbers that I provided on the uh, Notice of Intent Form 3 um, included the entire area of control of water. And so for control of water, we asked the, the uh, contractor to set to send us as a shop drawing a shoring and control of water plan because it's typically means and methods. So they have to tell us how they're yeah. going to do it. And then we approve it or we disapprove it, whether it meets that. And obviously um, that that can be discussed with the commission as well. I think we would want to have a copy of that provided to the agent and our commission as part of our special conditions. I mean, I'm assuming you're not working in the dry, right? It's not really necessary. It's really just, it's really just to get that shoring tower in there, and gotcha. th there won't have to be any dewatering. So there's no dewatering bag or anything like that because we're not we're not talking about again on top of the concrete footing. I didn't feel any sediment down there. It was basically hard on top of the footing. Um, so it's it's we're not expecting a whole lot of. A whole lot of uh, resource area um, impacts to to do this. I, I just wanted to point out here the water control plan as one of the uh, conditions for the natural heritage. Oh, okay. Also. Good. Thank you. I think that would be a good thing to put in our special conditions as well. I mean, obviously, you're not putting in a porta dam to do this, so that makes sense. And I think we would want to have our agent or commission look at that. I go back to the DEP. Um, yeah, I feel like we're already kind of jumping ahead onto number four, but and then number five just addresses, you know, do you need a water quality cert? Um, are you dealing with Army Corps? Where where I saw the Army Corps um comment. Is it here? With it's that number five. So it is a navigable waterway. It is a water of the US. So technically, yeah, we're talking about state regs and local regs, but this is also federally regulated. Amount of impacts in this location will not exceed a, a, a self-verification. So um I have not submitted that form yet. Um, but I will submit that form. Um, the self-verification is a page, page and a half, depending on how much explanation you put in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it should be a, a fairly easy, a fairly easy approval process. Have you done it since 2023 though? In June, 2023, there are new general permits and they're different and it's a lot more complicated, especially with historic resources. And this area has historic resources because of the old tap and die mill there. And it's, you're, it could take you some time. Yep, I'll definitely definitely look into it. Um, I, I know they changed in 2023. I've done some limited work with that. Um, there's another um, staff member in the office who's done a lot more, and, and I'll follow up with, with them on yeah, that. Yeah, kick it to the new process. Is, I, th I thought it was way easier in the olden days, but now it's gotten much more complicated, and it does, and they, the core does actually respond now. Um, but if you have, if you're over thresholds for dredge and fill, that's, that's what I think what Mark is suggesting that you would need to call, you know, um, you know, mass DEP in Boston for dredge and fill permits, but only for over thresholds, but either way, self-verification for the core. I've got a simple and probably silly question, but um, when a column is placed, how is it secured? 
So that's that's beyond beyond what what I know how they do that. Um, I can <laughs> get you an answer for that though. Um, okay. um, my understanding with with the system that I've looked at, um, which may not necessarily be the system that 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 they use. So the footing is of ample thickness. They generally require a concrete base, whether it's temporary or we're in luck because the footing is already a three or four foot thick base. So it's more than adequate for what they're they're going to require. So um the shoring platform, I believe, just needs to be on a on a on a flat planar surface, which we already have there. Um and because we're really just supporting the end of the beam, it's not meant to be used under active traffic. My my experience tells me that I don't think it's going to have to be anchored in any way, um, but I don't know the the answer, the definitive answer, and I can I can find out. But I suspect that, um, and and the reason why I say this is, um, I've seen before where they use cribbing, which is essentially eight by eight timbers or twelve by twelve timbers that they they do this underneath Make the beam, frame. and and um, so. You know, keeping that in mind, a shoring tower is not much different than that. Um, so, but I can I can find out. Thank you. I guess I have one more question about just the storage of materials on the asphalt. Will any of those materials be wet and potentially? lead to soil migration into resource areas. I'm just thinking about how we would want to condition erosion controls. So the only soil, the only materials they're going to be using are, are so they're going to be doing concrete excavation. So, and we, we put in, I mean, you'll have in the conditions as well, debris can't fall in the water. I'm, I believe I included that in our narrative. Um, and if it does fall in the water, it needs to be removed prior to the end of the workday. Um, <clears throat> and then rebar and concrete. Concrete can't get wet because if it gets wet, it's no good to them. <laughs> so, um, and, and then they, they're just basically going to mix and place the concrete. Um, and then there'll be wooden forms probably that they're going to apply. So there really is no need for um, any other materials than that. No soil, no stone, crushed stone, or no. This what about like? Would you be amenable to including floating, um, floating? What do you call them? Not Stone floating. Booms. Yeah, thank you. Floating boom, no. just in case there's some kind of hydrologic issue, like with one of the machines. Um, I agree. I think that's. A, I think it's good precaution. Okay. to deploy an anchor. Kristen, um, just to clarify, are you suggesting a boom for like oils from the machine that might fall in? Yep. And not like a sediment barrier? Yeah. So a lot of times and a lot of times, um, you know, an excavator or a crane or whatever dump truck will spray oil and if you're working directly in a navigable waterway like you would just want to catch that and a float so it's just it's an obvious bmp but i confess i didn't read the whole noi so i didn't know if you already you probably already presented that but i'm just bringing it up i don't I actually don't think it was in there typically when we think of we think of booms we do silt booms but i have seen hydraulics leak way more often than they should yeah me too um the hydraulic leak isn't necessarily a reason that they have to repair the hydraulic ram. I've seen it plenty of times on job sites. And when you work over water, all it's going to do is drip in there. One yep. drip, one drop. Um, so I think it's a good precaution. Okay. Any further questions from the commission? No? Uh, at this point, we will open the public comment period, and if anyone from the public has anything to say, this would be the time to do so. 
give it a brief moment, but not much of one. I suspect there aren't any folks here preparing to comment. That seems good enough to me. Uh, so we're not a lot of public lately. <laughs> not a lot of public. <laughs> go ahead and close the, uh, the public comment. Um, now, again, Travis, I'm going to lean on you a little bit here for the um, protocol piece. So, oh, motion and then do special conditions? Yes. Okay. So for, um, for an NOI, we would first motion to close the public hearing, mm -hmm. and then we would have to motion to issue a notice of intent after okay. that. So Order I'll go ahead and... Oh, yeah, sorry. Order of conditions. Um, so I'll go ahead and motion to uh, close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Take a vote. Erica? Aye. Emily? Aye. Kristen? Aye. Travis? Aye. I'm also an aye. We will uh, close that public hearing and move on to order of conditions. I'll make a motion to issue an order of conditions for uh, DEP file number 1680362, Notice of Intent Bridge Repairs near 43 Mill Street. The second. Okay. Vote. Uh, uh, well, we do the, the conditions first. Yeah. Conditions first. Okay. So what I had written down that we talked about so far was uh, the turtle control plan, the water control plan, both the natural heritage set, and then mm -hmm. a boom for hydraulic fluid leaks. Floating boom. Yeah. That's what I had written down as special conditions that we had talked about so far. Do we want to have any sort of road top erosion control measures required or just leave that up to the contractor to present to us for approval later similar to the water control plan and the turtle con turtle protection plan what do you have in mind i actually don't know i feel like the contractor might this is like one of those weird situations where i don't know it could change from what we've been present it. I don't know. There could be, I feel like this is one of those things where, I don't know, do you protect me? Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but like, would there be any alternative scenario where there could be something stockpiled on that road, such as crushed stone or soil that we haven't already talked about, like in some weird far off scenario where we would want different erosion controls and what would be just in our blanket conditions that the, that the contractor would be responsible for providing notice to the agent for. So for the scope of work as proposed in the notice of intent, there is no work proposed that requires the use of any other bulk materials other than concrete and staging. And where's the concrete washout area? That is a good point. We probably should show that on the plan. We could have, we could actually just ask that when we have the water control plan, we could ask for concrete washout areas to be identified in that plan, erosion controls to be identified in that plan. Like we can just punt all that to the contractor later. Okay. I think. That's my opinion anyway. Because they're going to have a better phasing idea, I think. Yep. Project like this, um, again, it's it's not like it's it's excavated land where they can just wash it out over there. You know, it's it's yep. it really. I mean, I mean, yeah, they could dump it where they're not supposed to, but I mean, I think most contractors are, are aware of the the. Uh, repercussions for something like that so most most <laughs> um people so here's the thing the contractor we're going to be getting to work on this bridge is going to be a bridge contractor so they're very used to this these sort of conditions um so it's not going to be 
Joe's excavation with a 30 year old excavator. So um, they'll be a mass DOT qualified bridge contractor. Anything else? Um, one thing that uh, was another thing that was mentioned was um, just specifying that no, uh, like a condition that no sediment, uh, no no material may fall into the river, and um, if it does, uh, you know, it needs to be removed. I don't know how to word that exactly, but. That was one that Bree came up with. <laughs> yeah, I believe I believe I have that listed in mitigation on the let me see if I can find it in the narrative. Here is the narrative. What? Here we go. Uh so that would be on page, let's see. Performance standards. would be on page 32, mitigation matters. Um, let me see here. Is this, is this what you're looking at? Oh yeah, BMPs. Sedimentation barriers placed between the work. Um, we actually don't have uh, that in there. Well, I usually put that in there. I don't know why it's not in there. About debris that falls into the resource area should be removed promptly. So that that's surprising that it's not there. Well, there I typically word it as, um, you know, uh, any debris that falls into the resource area shall be removed um prior to the completion of the work day okay because like it doesn't that. make any sense to leave it in there because you leave for the day and someone's going to forget it's in there so okay. i think i think we typically word it um immediately or prior to the to the uh no later than you know the end of the work day mm -hmm. i like that And then I guess, Travis, I don't know if we have just like a standard condition that states, you know, the applicant will ensure compliance with all other applicable regulations or something like that, because this is a water of the U.S. It is federally jurisdictional. Um, that's not really our jurisdiction, but do we have like a boilerplate that just kind of states that you will follow all other wetlands regulations or something like that? Do you remember? I don't, I don't know, and I'm not sure how enforceable that would be. I've um, seen that in other orders of conditions in other towns, and it's loosely worded because you're right. It's not like we can enforce other regulations that are outside of our jurisdiction, but mm. it, I have seen that, and I don't know how that's normally worded. I could find something really quick. Um So basically, I can send you a copy of the of the forms if if, if the commission is interested. When when we submit the the Army Corps uh, form, we can send you copies of that very easily. No, no, do we want that much extra work? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, we, I, 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 I don't know. So, Kristen, is what you're trying to get at is that we basically want to have something in that order of conditions that says applicant is responsible for being in compliance with other federal or state waterway regulations? Yeah, I'm trying to find some things really quick. Hang on. Um, doop -de -doo. So we don't need a dewatering plan, but uh, doop -de -doo. 
as built. Da, da, da. Sorry, give me one second. Sorry, this is like the longest thing ever. <laughs> um, Twenty more seconds tops, I swear, and then I'll shut up. The applicant shall be provided a copy of this order. That's our boilerplate, right? So like contractors will be provided a copy of the order conditions, like that should be one of our boilerplate if it isn't. Um, oh, here's, here's something. I think any person performing the work on the activity that is subject to this order is individually responsible for understanding and complying the requirements of this order, the act, town bylaw, wetland regulations, and other relevant regulations. Um, Here's another one. It is the responsibility of the applicant to complete and review any review required by all agencies with jurisdiction over the activity that is subject to this order and to procure all required permits and approvals. These reviews, permits and approvals may require but are not included or not limited to U.S. Army Corps of Engineers review by the DEP and procurement of any permits or approvals identified by the DEP, review local planning boards, zoning board of appeals, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's just like some boilerplate stuff from another example. And I didn't know if that's something that we normally consider, and I wouldn't normally think about that, but just because this is jurisdictional under Clean Water Act, you know, I mean, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we do is jurisdictional under the Clean Water Act, just as a WOTUS, but this is actually like a navigable waterway, so it's even more so. So I guess that's just why it was on my mind. But I don't know, do we have anything like that in our general language or I don't normally look at our orders of conditions? I don't, I, don't, I don't think we do. It might be worth expanding our general conditions just to like cover our bases a little bit in the future. And I think that's a table conversation for another day, but yeah. So do you feel like we should have that as a condition for this one? Maybe just because it is in it is it is below mean annual low. It is in land underwater. Something just like stating it is the responsibility of the applicant to complete any review required by all agencies with jurisdiction over the activity that is subject to this order. And just leave it at that. I mean, I don't think we need to get too in the weeds like this one is. Um, but I think I think that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we need to see a copy of your self verification, or if you do need to go. Um, you know, see if you actually need to do a PCN, which you might. I don't know that that would be historical stuff, not wetland stuff. Yeah. I know you're going to be in historical. I, I did a project on that dam a long time ago, and I know that there's historical resources there. We might need a PCN. Um, but, you know, just to like cover bases, because I know that that's there's a lot going on there. So we've got everything captured. Does anybody have any further questions or comments? No? Um, should I, do you want me to just summarize what Quick. we had said? Yes. Uh, so we had the turtle control, I guess the turtle control plan and water control plan. Turtle protection plan. Sorry, turtle. <laughs> I wrote control because I was thinking water control. Control those turtles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> turtle protection plan. And the water control plan, um, those are both, you know, those need to be sent to natural heritage um, for their approval. 
Um, and I think what we did in the past was just ask for copies to be sent to us. I don't think we said we need to approve it. I think in the past we just said, mm -hmm. send us a copy of the final plan that was approved by mm -hmm. Natural Heritage. Can we ask for agent approval of the water control plan just because that is more kind of our realm than the turtle protection plan? Yeah, I guess we could do that. If we have an agent. Yeah, hopefully we do. Okay, so turtle protection plan must be submitted to natural heritage, water control plan to be approved by natural heritage and the conservation agent. Um, a boom needs to be installed for hydraulic fluid to catch any hydraulic fluid that might leak. Um, um, any sediment falling into the river must be removed by the end of the workday and that the applicant is responsible for um, completing uh, approvals for all applicable regulations, essentially. Excellent. Thank to you. To summarize. Does that sound amenable to you, Bree? It does. Cool. Yep, it does. I'm, I'm taking the notes over here, too, so. Okay. Now we are ready for a vote. Erica. Aye. Kristen. Aye. Emily. Aye. Travis. Aye. I am also an aye. The order of conditions has been approved. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for hanging with us last time. Sorry about. Have a good night. Vacation. You too. Okay. Up next, public hearing continued from September 10th, 2024. Notice of intent, maintenance of roadways and drainage systems on I-91, routes 2, 5, and 10, DEP number 168-0363. Do we have any folks here for that? Is this the bundled or comprehensive? The, yeah, the bundled. I, I got a little bit of a verbal spanking from Mark about that. Um, I'm I've been out for a week, and I'm out this week in Boston in the field for for eighteen hour days in a row, including the weekend. So I'm way behind on helping with that. Um, mm -hmm. but I will get to that before our next meeting, if it's in my court. And I think it is, and I'm really sorry. I'm really behind. Um, we do have something that was in the folder mm -hmm. for that. Um, it looks like I think Nat didn't natural heritage approve the bundling. Something? It does look like that's yep. Do we not have anyone here for this particular project? <clears throat> Seems like perhaps we don't. It was uh, Billy, Billy, yeah. who was right. the, the Yeah, they were the one who was here last time for this. Um, so we kind of talked a little bit offline and um, I had basically suggested that she divide out um, three categories. Category one would be general operate, and we're just talking about operation and maintenance, and let's call it O&M from now on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not like expansion or, you know, culvert replacements, nothing design, nothing requiring engineering plans, just talking about routine O&M stuff. So like stuff would be category one, not requiring prior notice to the commission. And that would be pretty much stuff that's like exempt. And then category two would be stuff that requires prior notice to the agent and may require additional discussion with the commission. And category three would be requires additional permitting. That would be like culvert replacements and anything requiring engineering plans. And category two would be, I don't know, um, like work on underground utilities in resource areas or something. I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but I sent her an email that was kind of like, Exampling out stuff, and in their NOI, 
they had given a number of different examples mm -hmm. for each category. So I was like, you already kind of did it, you know, let's yeah. just break out those different scenarios and put them into like special conditions as examples for these three different categories. And then I, and that was before I went away last week. Um, Cause in the, in the NOI, she had a fourth category of just of emergency. Um, yeah. That would follow a different so. protocol though. Like, I don't know. But yeah. And then I guess I'm looking at for the first time, something that she sent and it doesn't really address that kind of stuff. So I, I guess I need to get more involved and just take a real crack at it. And then Mark wrote back and he wrote too much John Kristen, where are you? Get involved. <laughs> so yeah. I, I need to get more involved in this. So this is on me. Um, I got to help Billy out here. And this, I also found out, and I don't remember if I told you guys all this, but this is sort of Mass DOT, and forgive me if I already told you this, I'm like really burning the candle at both ends lately, but Mass DOT is trying to use this kind of bundled or comprehensive NOI model um, with Greenfield as the guinea pig. And if this works, they're going to try to use this for other cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth. So we really kind of need to like get it. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, because if this does work in our city, they're going to try to use that model in other cities and towns. And I honestly do think that this can work with a five-year order of conditions, but we need to be really thorough with the special conditions. Mm -hmm. And it could really streamline the communication between the state agency and the commissions and reduce the amount of business. You know, it could just really be a good thing, but it has to, it has to function. It has to work. Um, so it does need some attention and I, I promise I'm going to get to it. Just been a little bit mm -hmm. underwater lately. Which is totally understandable. And I seem to recall that they were not necessarily in any burning hurry, but wanted to just be proactive and start getting this ball rolling. Um, so I'm going to put a tickler on my calendar right now to do that next Wednesday night. And I will get in front of this before next week or in the next hearing. I mean, I promise. Okay. Um, let's see. So this is technically a public hearing. Um, but given that none of the folks are here, do we, shall we let's open up for public comment briefly? before we shut this one down. Okay. Any public would like to make a comment, please do so. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and close. Um, so I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing for notice of mm -hmm. intent maintenance of roadways and drainage systems on I-91 routes 2510. DEP file number 1680363. Sorry, let me say that again. <laughs> DEP file number 1680363 to mm -hmm. our next meeting on October 22nd at 6.30 p.m. I'll second that. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and vote on it. Emily. Kristen. Aye. Erica. Aye. Travis. Aye. I am also an aye. All right. So we are now closed. We are done with our public hearings. Um, moving on to other business and enforcement updates. Um, any topics not reasonably anticipated for data or was in advance of the posting of this agenda? Um, we've I, got, yep. No, oh, I was gonna say, I do have one that, you, okay. that we haven't talked about yet. Um, All right. So, um, you had asked me to join the economic development yes, committee yes, yes. meeting. Yep. It was at 6 p.m. So this is really within the within the last 30 minutes before this meeting. Thank you um, for reminding me. I had meant yeah. to, and then, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> so Thank you for I went, going and doing that. I appreciate it. Yeah, and they didn't really have that many questions for me. Um, and I said that we hadn't talked about it as a commission yet, so I couldn't like speak on the behalf of the commission and support it or you know anything like that. Um, uh, but I did point out that I just pointed out that um, 
uh oh one one of them had a comment about how the with the cluster so it, the main thing it was about like the cluster development ordinance the modifications to that ordinance and one of the changes is that um right now uh if someone does a cluster development and they're preserving they have to preserve like a certain amount of open space um they don't get um as much of a bonus for wetlands um because it's like not buildable anyway um and one of the changes gives them more credit if they're protect protecting wetlands mm -hmm. um even though it, they weren't going to build on it anyway probably um, yeah so the um uh basically i just pointed out that um you know whether this change to the ordinance happens or not, any of this construction would still, you know, be required to meet like Wetlands Protection Act regulations, the city right. field ordinance, wetlands ordinance, wetland ordinance. Um, and I said, including the 20 foot no disturb zone, there's the buffer yeah. zone, riverfront. Yeah. I mentioned all that. And then I also, so the other part of it is that when, if uh if and when a cluster development would happen apparently there's only been one in the last 20 years um that they have to preserve permanently protect the open space um that they're not building on either through donating it to the city to be park land or open space or putting a conservation restriction on it and i just pointed out that um, you know, if wetlands are being permanently protected uh, through a conservation restriction or being city owned, that falls under like our goals as a conservation commission in general. And also that um, there's a bonus in there where they can build a little bit more density if the land that's preserved is next to existing preserved land. So I just pointed out that we had talked about how that was like our priority too, was to protect land adjacent to existing protected land. Um, and yeah, that's basically what I told them. And that sounds like perfect. I feel like two things. One, some of these cluster development bylaws that I've seen in our towns in the Valley, looking at you, Belchertown, is really crappy. I mean, they have these islands of upland in the middle of these neighborhoods that are completely wildlife islands. Like they're just a waste of open space. I think that you really hit the nose on, you really hit the nail on the head, like talking about how protected open space is better protected if it's contiguous with other protected open space and not some little island in the middle of a cluster development neighborhood. And two that, you know, getting extra bonus for wetlands is not really, why would you get the extra bonus if you can't develop it? It's not developable anyways. You should get extra bonus points for saving uplands because that's more precious and real estate. So that would be the more I, difficult thing to protect. I think I think that's how it was previously where you got a bonus for protecting land that could be built upon. Yeah. Now, now you get a bonus for protecting land that could be built upon and wetlands. Mm. So it's kind of watering it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but that basically what that would mean is on the same parcel of land, if it had wetlands, um, now they could build more units, you know, in the same amount of space that they would have done otherwise. Gotcha. Um, that's really what the bonus is. They can build a you know, maybe a, another unit or two, um, a, a little bit more densely. The the benefit that I can see, and I'm not sure how much this would actually come up, but is that because wetlands or other areas that aren't developable don't have much monetary value to them, that's a disincentive yeah. to conserve them. So if there's some kind of incentive that people can get out of it, then it might be that um, it would at least put it on the the, the the table for them to calculate more wetlands in maybe they could acquire wetlands i don't know but 
it, it, it's nice to see something in there because one of the things about conservation is that when you're looking at the benefits that people get from it, either if the restriction's purchased or it's donated and you're getting the tax benefit, it's always, the bottom line is always what's developable. That's the dollar value that's associated with it. So what's lost in all of that is all of the ecosystem services of the mm -hmm. natural land. You're really looking at it in terms of dollars and cents. That's just a reality. That's the way it's calculated. It's based on the market. But it's interesting, I think, and it might be very good to put back in there, yeah, we really want to have an incentive here for people just to be developing, the, I mean, to be protecting the areas that really have a very high biological and biodiversity value in addition to the lands that have a, a, a monetary association with them. Let me ask this. What about 40 bees? So 40 bees get a lot of exemptions from rare species protection and wetlands protection and stuff like that. Would that qualify as a cluster development? I know I'm not sure how that works, but. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that that's what's intended to be involved. You know, it's about affordable housing. But I don't know enough about the overlap between 40B and environmental protections. Me either. But I know that yeah. if you're a 40B proposal, you get you get looser you get looser restrictions. Um, you know, for a number of reasons. Um, so I don't know. Something else to think about there. I think. But that would, I mean, basically that would apply whether they make these updates to the ordinance or not right i don't like know that, it depends on what those updates are if they would be applicable to future 40 bees and they're looser to something that's already looser hmm. does this sound like it's looser to you i don't know the way i mean i i, I don't have it memorized or anything but that when i look through it um I mean, I, I don't remember anything about 40B in there, but um, essentially they're making tweaks to it to make it a little more attractive. Since there's only been one in like 20 years that's happened in Greenfield, they're trying to encourage more by saying, okay, you can have a little bit more density, you know, like um, a little bit more units, uh, you know, even if there is wetlands, and I mean that's only one part of it. There's there are yeah. more little tweaks here and there. But um, when does this get voted on? Yeah, so that's the next part. Um, it may it's going to be at the city council meeting on the sixteenth, and at that EDC meeting, um, they said it would be great if someone from the conservation commission could be there, uh, either to answer questions or say what I said earlier about how wetlands, you know, the Wetlands Protection Act would still apply and how we want to preserve land to that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so that, that's, I don't know if uh, I'll defer to Elizabeth and Kristen as uh, chair and vice chair if, if you want to be that person. What time is that at? Because I do have a night meeting that night. Uh, I don't know if it's, oh, 6.30. Um, on the 16th of October? Yeah. I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My kid's birthday. <laughs> it's the twins' I mean, birthday. <laughs> um. <laughs> if, if you want, I mean, since I was at that meeting tonight, mm -hmm. uh, for continuity purposes, if you want me to be at that one too, I don't have anything going on that night, so. Um, I would greatly appreciate that. It, I also appreciate having your expertise and experience present um, at these things. Yeah, and your okay. previous comments were like exactly what I feel like the commission needed to convey. I made it up on the spot. I didn't think about it before. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I would have said. That's awesome. So yeah. thank um, you. So the other part of that is um because i will be at that meeting um is there anything i should convey on behalf of the conservation commission um 
like, for example, should we vote to support the, I mean, that's technically something we could do. We could vote to support the proposed amendments um, to the cluster development ordinance, but we don't have to, that I'm just bringing that I up. I don't know enough like, about it personally. I don't feel comfortable yeah. doing that without knowing enough about it, but that's me. I agree with you, Kristen. And I'm curious, like how this relates to, I don't know. I want to look at this bylaw in more detail because I, like I said, I don't like some of them that I've seen before and I don't know how that relates to 40 B's and I'm very curious about it. So I don't know where the best place is to look at the ordinance edits as they are now. But I will say, if you go to the city calendar and open up the economic development committee meeting for tonight, the agenda for tonight has the full um, ordinance in there with edits, with the proposed edits. Oh, I do that. Um, did, did you say little... it was going to? Okay. Were they were they planning to vote on it at that at that next meeting or? I don't know. I it. It had gone, so it was at the Economic Development Committee meeting last month, and then it went to the City Council meeting, um, and then they sent it back to the Economic Development Committee, and now it's going back to City Council. So I don't know if they're voting on it, like doing the final vote on it on the 16th or not, mm -hmm. or if they're going to have another hearing and then it'll be at the following one. I'm not they they didn't tell me that in the short amount of time I was at the EDC meeting yeah. before I left. What general um, authority or action can can we take, and as it relates to this? I mean, I think really the only thing we could do is like, if we wanted to support it, we could, you know. But we can't write really, a letter. Oh, that support. doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, we could. Or we could say we do not think that this, you know, mm -hmm. because it doesn't protect wetlands or whatever. I mean, we mm -hmm. could do that too. But I don't think there's anything. I mean, it from the that, you know, so the opens the cluster development ordinance already exists like it's already a thing that people can do and these are just um updates to it eric was at the meeting and he said basically when this was created in 1989 in greenfield it was like a pretty progressive thing but it's kind of like fallen behind gotcha. over time and so this is like to update it to more modern like you know modern ways of doing clustering into the, the new millennium <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> fair enough that was his take on it. gotcha so if we had like is there a deadline i guess if if i can't get to this till say the 18th is that too late or i mean i think if we i i mean we i don't think we have to do anything like i could just go and say what i said before at the EDC meeting mm -hmm. and not, you know, not take a position on it, just say, you know, the Wetlands Protection Act still applies, this still applies, the way it, you know, would require conservation restrictions, aligns with what the, you know, the Conservation Commission wants, especially with like- Basically you guys are still contiguous gonna land. And talk to us for any project development. Yeah, yeah, so, um, I guess that would just be a way of like reassuring people that this isn't trying to like skirt wetlands laws or whatever, you know, like yeah. it would still apply. Yeah. Um, I think that's why they wanted me to go just to like say that at a city council meeting, just so Have the public record. hears it. Because more people are going to hear it at a city council meeting than an EDC meeting, which I didn't even know the EDC existed until like a month yeah. ago. So. <laughs> yeah. Same. Something for us to think about is that if this is changed or becomes more prominent or is encouraged, you know, you know, for thing because of things like the uh, updates to affordable housing laws in the state and so on, and also because there's a housing crisis on, so maybe people would take advantage of these um, these uh, incentives. 
we as a commission need to be prepared and think about the capacity needed to take on additional conservation restrictions because this type of restriction is different from what conservation um, organizations typically are focusing on and have a lot of enforcement issues that might make them not high on the priority um, of a nonprofit organization to take on. So, and also if it's our community that's requiring this and it's us presumably that's benefiting from it, it's also a responsibility thing for us to take on those easements. And it also gives us um, leverage over them because we're the ones who are watching them and maintaining them. It's so, such a huge fit. Yeah, that's so true. Like a lot of times when I'm writing a CR or trying to find, like I'm doing like a permit for natural heritage or something and like looking for commissions to take on conservation land, they won't take it if it's not abutting other adjacent parcels or doesn't have public access. If it's just like a nothing land, liability issue, rape or alley, whatever. I mean, that's such a good point. I didn't even think of that. Oh, Emily, you're such a good commissioner. Like, this is such a good point. <laughs> it's such a good point. Yeah. It's a reality of it. And also, like you were saying before, Kristen, sometimes the way they're designed, it really isn't prioritizing the conservation values. It's just kind of a by the acre, you know, it's numbers. Yep. So whatever can be done to encourage the design of these to be thoughtful and having it about other protected land is one really important factor. So I would definitely. Yep. And public access. Our... I mean, if that's if that's part of our, you know, priorities and agenda, then, you know, if it's just like an island in the middle of nowhere with no frontage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the what's, what's the real what's... full benefit of this? Yeah. Other than just being conserved acres. Such a good point. That said, I'm happy. Bring it on. I'd love to do some really high value <laughs> conservation. Do it. But then we need to have support and we need to think yeah. about it and be thorough and all those things. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Travis. I appreciate you taking the time to go and, and sit in on that for us mm -hmm. and moving forward with the next one as well. <clears throat> Yeah, now I just have to remember what I said uh, <laughs> and go to the next meeting and say the same thing. I was so smart that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What did I say? Hopefully it's recorded and I can go back and listen to it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, so I do see a couple of things on here, but I don't. I can't recall if these are just standard things that are there. Yeah, that stuff. Ask discussion of, sorry, Kristen, I noticed you highlighting it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to keep my place. I'm like tired. I'm shutting. I'm closing it. You're in. You're in. I'm well, out. Absolutely. No, no. I, I appreciate that's what I was talking about, though. But anyway, uh, so discussion on asphalt type for 105 Mohawk Trail project. Ah. Yep. Hello. Wonderful. Hello. Uh, so Chris started, um, started engineering. Um, Effie, who's actually on the call as well, um, she reached out to me to based on your meeting that you folks had back on July 23rd was the request for her to um, switch from porous pavement in the back of the um, proposed building to traditional pavement. Um, and one of the questions was, um, is there any stormwater calculations done to see if the existing rain garden could handle the, um, the flows as opposed to being infiltrated into the porous pavement? Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have a plan that I can share with the commission if I have the ability to do so. Thank you, Ken. Should be. Uh, let's go with this one. Uh, can everybody see that? I, yep. So what I did is I took the original design actually let's go to this was the original one that was approved so uh porous pavement well, let me zoom in it's not quite close so the porous pavement was going to be in this area here with obviously this rain garden um mm -hmm. this retaining wall has been installed um so that's all in erosion controls all of nothing there's no more work to be proposed outside of that stone wall or the excuse me the retaining wall so what we've done is like I said, I took the calculation. I figured based on their design of how deep the stone was going to be, 
Um, I took a void ratio of 35% and came up with a total of 350 cubic feet of volume needed to um, offset that. So what I've done is, let me zoom in here. The existing, the original design uh, rain garden was right here. So what I've done is actually extended it up closer to the building, all within the grass area here. And uh, what we've been able to do is take that at the required 350 cubic feet of volume and add that to the existing 246 feet, uh, which we would need now 596. And the um, the increase in rain garden actually gets you up to 675 cubic feet. So we have more than more than enough to compensate for making this um, impervious pavement, I guess. Um, the other thing is when I was out on the site, I realized that the flow wouldn't reach this if we did not add this asphalt berm within the paved area that is proposed. So um, we don't obviously don't want to lose that off the site. So um, just in addition to the pavement on top of it no more increase in pavement but so any water that flows here that would have missed the rain garden um, is now going to be directed into that rain garden i think that's what the commission was asking for um but i can answer any questions that do come up uh, from you folks and hopefully this satisfies your request or our for our, to uh, switch to from porous pavement Yeah, and I think so. I think just to clarify, um, um, I think previously, um, I think Effie was here and you know was saying that she was having a hard time finding someone to do the porous pavement, and so I don't think we necessarily requested that it become impervious surface, but you know, just saying that as long as there was something that you know mitigated any changes. Um, and didn't make things worse, uh, that that might be acceptable. Um, so Yeah, I, I actually find that porous pavement is difficult to maintain, even in the best conditions. Any amount of sand that gets in it ends up quickly clogging the system up. Um, so I, th I, yeah, I think this is a better approach. I think the rain garden is a much easier thing to maintain. Um, and you know, per the numbers, we're getting as good of capacity for stormwater retention. I just had a quick question. You were talking about adding that um, asphalt berm. Is there any, um, does between the asphalt and the rain garden, is that just like level, you know, the water would just sheet flow into the rain garden? There, there aren't like curbs and curb cuts or anything? No. Nope. See, I can show you here. I'll reshare the screen again. Um, no, this is the detail that was approved. Or, oh, did I hit share? Yeah, there we go. Let's see. There. Oh, okay. no, the water will sheet flow directly into the rain garden from the, um, from the mm -hmm. pavement. So just just for the rest of the commission, um, I believe in the past we've done when there have been, um, you know, someone working on a project has had to change something during, you know, during construction um, and then has shown that it will not, you know, impact the wetland or resource areas more that we've um, been able to just approve it like approve it in the minutes basically so that in the minutes it would say yeah this modification is okay um, the modification to the plan because it's not going to significantly change anything that would impact the resource area so I think that is what we would do here if if we agreed on that okay do we have any other questions from the commission
barring any questions or comments, I think that Travis's plan of action works for me. Does everybody else uh, see a nod from Emily and Great. Kristen? Sounds like a good yeah. solution. Okay. Kristen? I'm going to abstain. Okay. All right. Um, so given that this is, do we want to do it? Do we need to, to motion or just are I'll, we going to? I'll make a motion to uh, just approve in the minutes uh, the modification to the plan um, as presented. Excellent. I'll second. I'll second. Nope. <laughs> Defer. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and vote. Uh, Erica? Aye. Travis? Aye. Emily? Kristen? Abstain. I am an I. Can I just make one comment? I'm sorry. And I had my speaker off because I have a grandfather clock and it was ticking and I thought that would be really annoying. Um, <laughs> but in the conditions also, it, it mentioned something in regards to a dry well. And um, I didn't know if I just wanted to, if Chris, you wanted to mention if it was still needed or not. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I none of the plans actually have a dry well. It was just a random comment or a random condition. So my, based on the stormwater numbers, I don't think it's needed. Um, I don't understand. It, there's a whole series of things you would have to go through to prove a, rain, uh, a uh, dry well that meets stormwater standards. Um, none of those were in the plan sets originally approved. So I would request that we could not install that um because based on the numbers i don't think we need to but i guess that's up to the commission if the commission chooses to make us do it <laughs> i don't think and i don't know if this commission was even the commission back then but i don't think so yeah i mean right now it's um it, it's all sheet flowing and there's no issues and um we don't have the rain gardens installed. I don't, I don't, I it's, it was in there, but I don't understand why, because there's nothing to back up what would be considered a, you know, a, the dry well. I mean, I guess I need, I would need some clarification from the commission, what they would actually require, but um, yeah. So I don't know why you would do that. It looks like we're talking about this condition. Yes, correct. Yeah, 46. Back edge of the roof shall be rain gutters discharged to dry well. Um, it doesn't specify size or depth. I mean, it, it. I would request that the commission allows us to discharge them into their, uh, well, I guess it would be discharge them onto the ground and have it let it sheet flow into the rain gardens. Um, because in my professional opinion, that dry well is not going to do anything. And it's just going to fill up immediately. And when you did your um, your calculations, did that include the water runoff from the building? Um, yeah, not to replace the volume of the porous pavement. Um, but I would argue, or I shouldn't say argue, I would believe if the porous pavement was designed to have the rain gardens discharging into it, that would have been within that cubic volume, that cubic feet of volume that we're replacing. Um, plus a little bit. So if the 300 and if the 350 cubic feet of volume could handle that, us adding that extra 350 plus a few, plus about 80, 90 more cubic feet, should handle that extra roof runoff into the rain gardens. Does that make sense? Is there, I know that the, the um, condition asks that there's a, be a gutter that runs into the, the drywall, the non-existing drywall. What is in the plans in terms of the, the water and the the from the roof is there a gutter leading it somewhere or is there not a gutter yeah, i believe the gutter is already installed correct yeah there's there's already a gutter on the building 
but the gutter just brings it down, right? It Correct. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Down. Yes, it discharges it just to the, uh, I guess, the back left corner um, of the building right now. Okay. So the request you're making is for the condition to be changed at the minimum to allow the discharge instead of it going underground to a dry well to the the rain garden area or correct. to the surface where it'll sheet, but it'll be correct, yes. Yeah. Contained and dealt with and yeah. Yeah. The whole the that whole section of the parking lot sheet flows into that rain garden. So that's what we yes. <laughs> correct. Um that seems agreeable to me, not being a engineer or expert in these matters. Um, we did just approve to the changes to the plan and the conditions call this out specifically. So I, if anyone has any knowledge that would indicate why that would be called out, that'd be great. Otherwise, um, I'd be agreeable to a change. I was just looking up uh, the original plans and conditions and everything in the folder, but um, yeah, I don't, it, it doesn't, as he said, it, in the approved plans, um, it doesn't mention a dry well. And these are the previous, previously approved plans. And it actually doesn't even show, if you look on the left side of that, the parking area, there's no berm. So I'm not even sure how they were going to keep the water on the site, to be, to be very honest with you. Mm -hmm. I caught that one in the field visit and I was like, oh, we got to make a change here because we'd lose all that water. That, that rain garden, in essence, wouldn't have gotten a drop of water into it. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a uh, it was a blessing that this project has taken a little bit longer mm -hmm. because we were able to I think correct that major oversight. Yeah, and it does say proposed porous asphalt. Um, mm -hmm. Oh wait, hold on, wrong one. Mm -hmm. Proposed, yeah, porous asphalt parking area. See detail five sheet one. Yeah, it's actually up, it's, it's, the, it's upside down. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's the that's the so that's the that's the detail I used to calculate how much volume, obviously, you know, with the stone having taking up some of that volume, and I actually negated the three inches in between the two, so I kind of hedged on a I wanted to err on the side of caution. Yeah, I was just pointing out that it doesn't show dry well oh yes uh, as yeah, part right. of the porous pavement area on here either i don't know erica i think you were around when this uh came through first I, right i'm i'm not even sure i don't know if this was presented when you did the retaining wall or was this later but because I wasn't around for the retaining wall. Um, it it looks based on that original plan that it was all done at that time because it it's referencing a proposed retaining wall. So I'm okay. wondering if they tried to permit it all together. I don't know that answer though. I do know mm -hmm. that retaining wall is in now though. It's mm -hmm. in and fully vegetated. So yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I wasn't around. I I I was around when you kind of came back to restart the project. <laughs> Um, after the meantime, you know, but... okay. Um, so where where do we stand, Travis? We've approved the a change to the rain gardens. <laughs> We've determined that the <laughs> the dry well was not in the plans. Um, yeah, I think we I think we could like if. If we feel like the um, that condition for the dry well um, doesn't match with what the commission approved as the plan for construction, I think we could vote to um, strike that condition 
as a clarifying manner as like a you know a way to clarify that this was not uh, a dry well was not part of the approved plan and so it, it we're just clarifying that that doesn't need to happen because it wasn't part of the originally approved plan or currently approved plan so it's really a uh like a housekeeping you know it's like an it's like an administrative yeah mm -hmm. just a, like an administrative edit yeah. um for clarification like hey somebody approved this plan <laughs> and then added something that wasn't relevant or not part of the plan anyway <laughs> yeah yeah I we had there were a couple conditions like that for a couple other projects I think um I think it was one of the utility projects maybe where we had a condition that didn't make sense with what uh you know it like exceeded our authority over the the right of way or whatever and it mm -hmm. and they came back and we struck it because it didn't um you know it wasn't part of what we had actually approved it was just like a standard condition that got added even though it shouldn't have been there where this one obviously wasn't a standard condition that was um added that way but since the commission of the time approved a plan without a dry well it seems weird to say they need a dry well gotcha. so i guess i'll go ahead and make a motion to hold on i need to does anyone remember what condition so number it was one? number 46 46 uh i will make a motion to strike condition 46 uh that requires a dry well um uh from this project um due to the fact that that conflicts with the approved plan that does not include a dry well second all right let's take a vote uh kristen abstain emily aye erica aye travis aye I'm also an I. Awesome. Which one is all removed? <laughs> Thank you so much, folks. Good luck with the building. <laughs> Thank you, gonna... everyone, so much. Have a great night. <laughs> you too. Thanks. Okay, so we still have a couple of things on here. Uh, next was the Open Space Task Force updates. Okay, so if this has been a nice short meeting, I would have said, let's dig in. But um, uh, the link was circulated by Eric of the, the, the actual priorities sort of boiled down that our task force um, group had put together. Um, another update in terms of the, the membership um, Jonah and Mary dug into the open space law and found that the best way to include the public is just at each meeting to open it to members of the public who wish to participate. So there's two or three people who will likely join us in that way who have a lot of expertise and are interested. So we're very glad for that. Um, so uh, we are invited as a commission, the Conservation Commission, to review those priorities and provide feedback, um, particularly if there's projects we're already working on, things that we would want to work together with the task force or with other boards. Um, so my suggestion is just to refer you folks to that link. We can send it again if you need it again. We can maybe put it in the minutes. Um, Actually, I don't know if it makes sense to put it in the minutes. It was shared with this board, but we don't necessarily want. It's not uh, ready for prime time to be circulated widely. So we're gotcha. reaching out to each of the boards individually. Um, and I think that those are the highlights that I have for you all. Does that seem agreeable? And we can return to it. Uh, maybe at next meeting or the following, if, if there's a a time that has 
a shorter agenda so we can concentrate on it. You're muted, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so it looks like we've got some enforcement updates, but I'm not sure. Um, I think it would have been maybe Eric that would have discussed these things. I know. Uh, Eric did send an email about that. We saw uh, um, there was the date for the Brusco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. November 15th, I think. Yeah, he was yeah. going to follow up. I'm trying to get that up too. He checked with the restoration plan on 75 Oak Hill Road. Jeff Brusco needs to be done, which is November 15th. Okay. I have an update about a uh, cutting plan. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't looked into that yet, um, and I'm not going to get to it. Um, I just saw it today, and I think it's got a 10-day window. Um, and I said, yeah, that was the one on Silver Street. Mm -hmm. Silver Crest Lane. I so did you look at that? Visit. I hope okay. that's all right. I didn't reach out to anybody else. Oh, Eric my God. Weber Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't even notice until today. I was like. God damn it, I'm failing again. I'm just letting everyone down. I'm so busy. Okay, let's hear it. Thank you, Emily. All right, no problem. Is it right if I share screen? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can just pull this up. All right. So here's the map from the cutting plan. Not sure if you're familiar with Silvercrest Lane. It's a little condominium development off of Silver Street. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, <laughs> you have to drive right past two houses. I went there and I was like, where is this access road? So I called <laughs> the forester and he happened to be in town looking at bicycles for his kids. So he came out and drove me there. And it's it's basically you're driving over somebody's lawn, but it's an access. Um, this right here where my cursor is, it's a road to nowhere that presumably was built there in the idea that maybe there would be more houses someday. There is a lot of wetland back here. There doesn't seem to be any plan to be any um, building done right now, but this road has been maintained. Um, uh, the Forester is um, Richard Valcourt Jr. Um, and the road has is in very good condition. I can give you some pictures. Just just really quick, do you think the wetlands are undermapped? That the DEP statewide data uh, layers are, are underrepresenting the existing conditions based on what you saw? Well, right now it's dry conditions, so there was very little evidence of wetlands that I gotcha. saw. Okay. Well, I just thought that because you said there's a lot of wetlands back there. Um just no, I just looking at the map right then. That's all oh, I was really okay. Oh, where'd I go? Here's the picture. There we go. Um, so that's the road, you know, coming up from the open area that's yard, basically. And this is heading into the woods. And this is essentially the log landing area. You can see that it's a little wider here. Um, there will not be clearing for the log landing, so to speak. It's just going to be lining up the trees here. Um, the equipment that will be used will be a, a person with a chainsaw and a forwarder. And the areas that I was looking at were the areas that were affected, that were under our jurisdiction. And that is here where there's the, there's a wetland crossing. And there's a stream crossing, but basically it, there was dry conditions. So I didn't, I didn't see a stream, you know, there there was basically just dry, dry ground where I was looking. So there we go. Yeah. Um, the areas that have wetland plants have been flagged. This is Richard showing me the areas, and it's all just dry ground presently. Um, the trees. For cutting are marked with blue paint. 
and this is the condition basically of the ground in the areas that'll be crossed. Um, the cutting plan called for cutting either under frozen ground or under dry conditions. So they're, they're doing it under dry conditions, which is smart because the way that our um, winters are now, they're basically, <laughs> is very little frozen, you get drowned. Um, so I, I concur that the plan had already been reviewed by Allison Wright Hunter, who's the service forester in the area. I didn't see any issues. Um, and so I don't, I don't have any complaints to refer to the committee or to Allison. Um, if anything comes up, any neighbors complaining, then she's who we would contact. Um, and, you know, Richard would be, would be happy to go out with us again, but any questions? Just thank you. Sure. Yeah, and I think, so my my understanding, we haven't had a whole lot of forest cutting plans like this. My understanding is that, uh, I think we've talked about it in the past of uh, like designating one person to be the person to review forest cutting plans and respond on behalf of the Conservation Commission, because I think like you said, it's 10 days, right, to respond. Very true. And, yeah. and I think it it's was, like... It was me and Fletcher before. Okay. We had both of us. And so, again, Mark's reached out to me and he was like, what are your comments on this? And I was like, crap, I only just saw it, like, today. <laughs> um. So... I can oops. email Mark if you'd like. Yeah, be, I mean, it's it's... Just good to have backup. Do you want to be like a second forest cutting plan person on the commission? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Just in case I go off for a week and don't come back and then don't see it until Tuesday. Yeah. Because that happened. <laughs> One other comment about this plan. I asked him about the volume because it was 70,000 board feet and mm -hmm. then cords and um, pulp. Um, a lot of that's because of the site conditions. The trees are very tall. So the cutting's not a large area, but the volume that's going to come out is more than you would usually see. It's almost all pine that's going to be taken out, and it's a very good pine site. So when you look, walk in there, these trees are, are extremely tall and in you know pretty good um, marketable condition. Mm -hmm. cool. I think Eric would be a good person to, if you did want to volunteer for being on the commission's forest cutting plan review. Maybe Eric would be a good person to let know. When he sent me the email, it seemed like he had already gotten that impression from me. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm very happy to. I've maintained my license. I'm involved in forestry, so it's oh. it's very comfortable. Wonderful. We have such a good commission team, guys. It's like the dream team. Kristen. Love it. Kristen, when you just said, oh, I thought you were going to say, oh, bless you. <laughs> I, I'm, I I'm in love with our commission right now. I feel like we have such a good commission. We have such a good diversity of disciplines and experiences. And I'm just, I, I'm like in love with our team right now. I feel like I'm the weak link. I have to step it up. I You're definitely need... not the weak. No. <laughs> definitely not the weak link. Need more time. So busy. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Uh, that looks like that's it then. With the email that we had gotten from Eric and Emily's updates, I'd say. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> 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 I have to wake up at 3 30 in the morning. I was supposed to go to Boston tonight and mobilize for a 6 30 a.m. start, but I just I didn't get back until my client meetings until 4 30 and there was a time and now I have to mm. suffer with a pre dawn mobilization. Well, I I I understand that, but I'm in, I'm in Florida right now and having to deal with oh boy probably oh. maybe evacuating tomorrow with my parents. So. Yeah, you oh, definitely have that worse, Milton. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh, Erica. Yeah. Be safe. 
we were I think we were going to stay but now it's looking like I think we need to move. Yeah. Be so. careful. I mean, you you're taking care of your mom, right? Like Well, well, well both my parents. Both your parents. They're yeah. Eight, 89 and 91, so. Yeah. Man. Be careful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So. Um so we still have to vote. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh Kristen. Aye. <laughs> Erica. Aye. Emily. Aye. Travis. Aye. I'm also an aye. Um until next time, which will be October 22nd at 6 30 p.m.